So what's the difference between a neck disc herniation versus a back disc herniation? The fundamental difference comes to the fact that in our neck, right, we have our spinal cord, versus down here, they're just nerves that go to our legs. And the reason that's different is because the spinal cord controls everything below that level, right? So if you got injured right here, your spinal cord, well, guess what? You're going to be paralyzed from your shoulder down, right? So it's a very different beast, as I like to tell my patients, when we have someone who has a bad cervical disc herniation or neck disc herniation versus the one in their back. Again, location, like in real estate, is everything, right? Where that disc is coming out, that jello is coming out, determines the treatment, right? So sometimes the disc herniates or pushes out. So this is an example of someone's MRI, right, who has a bad problem in terms of how much pressure is on their spinal cord. But if the, you know, if the herniation was down here by the nerve on the left or right, again, it, it's a very different treatment, right? Because that's a pinched nerve. Just like the low back disc herniation, the vast majority of those patients get better without surgery, right? We can try therapy, we can try cortisone injections to help reduce the swelling around that nerve and give their body a chance to recover. But this is an example of a, one of my patients. He's actually a, a lawyer, a young, very young gentleman in his, in his 30s, who was in, involved in a car accident. And all of a sudden, he's have, having trouble walking, he's have, having trouble writing, his handwriting has changed. Right? These are all signs of a problem with the spinal cord. Right? If there's pressure on the spinal cord, those are the earliest signs. Right? You're going to have a, a imbalance. Right? If you close your eyes, you feel like you're, you're, you don't know where you are in space. Those are, those are clues that, hey, I may have a problem with my spinal cord, and I really need to see a spine surgeon for that. Right? So this patient of mine, right, you can see the spinal cord is getting pinched here. The reason you know this, right, you see how there's a white line on either side of the cord here? here and, and above it, but then this, this fluid, this white spot, is not there anymore, right? So what's happening is the spinal cord is getting squeezed by the discs, right? There's herniations at three levels, right? Three spots where he's having problems with his spinal cord. And he's in my office, he's tearful, he doesn't know if he can continue as a lawyer, he's having trouble concentrating, he's having bad headaches, Right? And so I was there to help him and tell him, hey, listen, there's, there's hope. And the answer isn't, hey, let's go fuse your neck. Right? Because that's going to be very disabling for a, a young guy in their 30s. Right? We want to preserve their motion. And thankfully, with amazing innovation, the technology is caught up. And now we can do a disc replacement at multiple levels, whether that's two levels or three levels or sometimes even four levels to get the patient back to their lives. So this is a video and I would just pause it so I can really show you what's going on. We've opened up the space, that space between the bones, right? We've taken out the Boston cream and the Jello, And what you're really looking at here is actually the spinal cord, right? So all this disc that was pushing on his spinal cord is gone, right? We've taken that pressure off. So we've prepped everything, we've prepared everything so we can give him a new disc, right? And I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but we've done this at three different levels for this gentleman, right? So this is what it looks like afterwards, right? So this patient has these small little disc, her disc replacements. So they're actually the size of, a, of an M&M. Not, they're not very large, they're very, very small. And this is the latest technology out there. This has very little metal in it. It's actually a ceramic core. And I'm gonna show you in a little bit more detail what it actually this technology looks like. So after they have the surgery, the most important thing is to preserve their motion. And we assess that by getting these films called bending films. We actually have them bent forward and bent back to make sure that it's moving appropriately. Right? Different patients need different amounts of motion, so we actually customize the type of implant based on their motion. And so you can see here that the patient's moving physiologically right, the way they're supposed to. And this lawyer went back home the next day. In fact, that night after surgery, 
against my advice, he was actually working. He was feeling so good, right? So it's incredible to see these patients get back and bounce on back, 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 excuse me, bounce back on their feet, um, literally.